this thing off right live and lit at media campus west shout out to everybody that's tuned in with us right now through the reach radio app we also live on media campus west of course we are broadcasting for uh, magic 1075 97.5 you know the reach show and we are broadcasting live right now on reach radio we have a very special guest in the building you know we never use that term lightly this young lady has been doing it since she's been doing it I'm talking about a movie that is probably one of the most quotable movies in our culture. She has a book that's in a uh, museum. Everybody can't say that. Some people just in Barnes or Nobles. You in both. She got a book that's in a, in the museum that's coupled with the Smithsonian. She has a, a podcast. She's a humanitarian. She's award winning on all across all those platforms. She's got movies with Carlton. From if you know what I'm saying, she got all types of IMDb credits. <laughs> when I say Carlton, I mean I'm talking about people like Paul Winfield, Eric Roberts, Alfonso Rivera, like I said, Bill Nunn, and that's not even getting into what we talk about Whoopi, Oprah, Steven Spielberg. Let's talk to a man. We have the one, the only, Desiree Jackson in the building. <laughs> What's going on, Miss Lady? Man, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate <laughs> you, my brother. There we go. We appreciate what you're doing because you're fighting battles on a few different levels. When I say that, I mean mm-hmm. that you, you speak from the standpoint of culture. You talk about hair because you've done the research, not just because you do it. Most celebrity stylists could just say they celebrity stylists. They, they style this person's hair. They style that person's hair. But what you said you've actually done some research, wrote a whole book about it and got it <laughs> yes. put in a museum. It's on display. And then people from other cultures could say that it's not just hair. It is a way of life. It's a lifestyle. And it's a way that people can stay interconnected. You had a, a scene in the movie that everybody's remember where you, you combing the hair, somebody screaming and you like, I had to pull from a place of my own pain and hurt. Cause this, right. this young lady's hair was, was easy to comb through. <laughs> so we over here really acting. We really faking it till we make it. You yeah, know what I mean? Here. So, mm-hmm. so, I mean, you, you take all your, your experiences and you combine them. And for those, you know, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know who we talking about. If you just told it, you combine those experiences and then you make it easier for other people. So that my friend is what we like to say, and give our kudos and flowers to. So we oh, appreciate you for what you're doing. Adding to not taking away. Ooh. That's what I'm talking about. He deep. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now let's go I ahead and go through it because yes, you have so yes. much history. We can't just start in one place. We're gonna okay. be jumping around. So okay. listen, we just gonna talk a little bit, all right? Yeah. So um of course, most people know you from the movie, right? Right. Or the movies and the TV shows. Yes. And you one of the first people to have a reality show. Yes. Before reality shows were popular. Before Love yes. and Hip Hop, Miss Jackson had her own thing going. Yes. So we got to yes. talk about that too. But okay. let, let's let's start from where people know you. And okay. then we want to get into this book. It's very important. And we want to talk about your podcast. Oh. Because okay. you got a podcast. Yes, you know, I so do. I always love when other podcasters come and we can oh. talk a little bit. All right. Okay. So let's start from the beginning. <laughs> All right. Let's you see. get cast as Young Seely. Yes. The color purple. Yes. Arguably one of the most quotable and <laughs> quoted movies Man. in the last hundred years, last century. Man, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> who knew? It's funny, when I did The Color Purple, I wasn't an actress. Okay. I wasn't in the industry. I was about to ask you that. How did this happen? Wasn't even in this industry. Um, I literally, I came to California when I was nine years old. Okay. Came here. I was homeless. My mother didn't know nothing or mm. anyone. And I was going to, a, um, we moved to Watts okay. um, on Colden, and I was going to a school. Uh-huh. And one day I was just taking an acting class. Mm-hmm. In, well, it was in English first. Okay. So my English class teacher and had. And this was at, in the school? This was in the school. Okay. And if I ever stop you, I'm not trying to no, be rude. I no. just want to clear because people don't, you know, they may not know the whole story. I got so. you, man. Okay. I got you. So, yeah, <clears throat> it was in the school. Mm-hmm. I took an English class. Okay. And. The teacher was doing something different when she decided to have kids. She wanted to do a, a scene. Okay. And so I came up on, you know, to mm-hmm. do the scene with another um, classmate of mine. Yes. And this girl started doing the scene, and I'm going to give her kudos. Mm. She started crying and started getting into the scene. Okay. And then I'm like, I transcend. I mm. was going right along with her. Mm-hmm. You keeping up. Yes, and right. we got deep into the scene and ad living and going. So it got so bad that the classroom started crying. Mm. The bell rang. 
the teacher was like, cut. Right. And when it was over, I was like, I like this. Mm. What part did you like that you were able to dive into it or did you like the reaction or was it a combination of everything? It was the fact that during that moment, Mm -hmm. I didn't remember nothing outside of that moment. Okay. Okay. I personally, you know, like, like I said, I was home coming from being homeless. Right. And you were just, this when you just moved, you just moved from the islands. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just moved from the islands, but we had kind of like was all over. Okay. Kind of like a gypsy. Right. Kind of like. Trying to figure it out life. Life Yeah, my mom just kind of was like everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was from, I'm from the British Virgin Islands Mm -hmm. and, you know, it was just. But, I mean, when I talk about barefooted, walking by the beaches, mm-hmm. on the islands, right? it was a movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch television. Yeah. So it was one of these experiences that was just coming to California was just different. Mm-hmm. Um, also, before I came here, I used to be paralyzed every, like for the, like six months of a whole year, mm-hmm. my body weighs down, I'll be paralyzed. So my life was just kind of intrigued with a lot of different things going mm-hmm. on. And when we got here, I, I didn't get paralyzed anymore, but then I was getting into gangs. Okay. I hold mean, on, hold on. We got to rewind a little bit because you just oh, keep Lord. saying stuff we got to talk about. <laughs> every yeah. few months or every six months, yeah. you lose the usage of your lower half. Yes. Did they say why was it? It's well, let's put it this way without going too deep. Okay, um, I was being molested by my father, okay, okay. stepfather, I should I say. And as an older version of me now, mm-hmm. I kind of figured it out trauma, yeah. So, and I not think, to, I'm not making light of that. No, no, I hate that. I kind of figured it out yeah. that because there was the doctors couldn't really say why, yeah. But you, um, you, you were defending yourself. I th- yeah, I think somewhere along mm-hmm. six months out of the year, a certain time during the summer, I just I was dead. Mm-hmm. And my mother would, you know, like they would literally have to take me to the bathroom right. or or take me around. And I think that's the way my body might have responded. Yes, yeah, that makes plenty of sense. So when I came here and he wasn't here, yeah. this was the first time that I went a whole year mm-hmm. that I never had that experience. I understand. I understand. And I wanted to stay in California at that point. I would too. Yeah. So with that, like I said, you know, but then I went, my mother moved to Watch. South Central. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what it is. And then. when I tell you I had a strong accent. Yeah. And I had them color purple pigtails for real, for real. Uh-huh. In real life. Yeah. That's how my hair was. Gotcha. So I leave the house, go go to school, take that out, put it in some kind of um change yeah. change up the look. Right. But I still was being, you know, I got into fights. And I, mm. when I say I got into fights, I'm talking about for some reason dudes wanted to fight. Mm. It was fights constantly. Mm-hmm. And eventually I did fall into gangs for a small time. Mm-hmm. So when I was in class, that moment That was almost like therapy. Man. I think you hit it right there. It was mm. just, I, and I came home that day, mm-hmm. and I remember saying to my mom, hey, I want to act. Mm-hmm. I want to act. And, and it was funny because as a little girl, they said I used to say I'm going to be a movie star. That yeah, was say, you. you. know how you say yeah, something, yeah. you manifest things. I thought I was going to be Prince. I understand. <laughs> I had a little guitar. I was trying to climb over the curtains. I was like four. I understand. I get it. I get and, it. Man, it was, <clears throat> so that was what I was going through. Uh-huh. And I think that, that's what I love. I understand. I get it. You found you you had a dream, didn't know what it was no. yet, but then you get introduced to it, and that said, and it becomes passionate. It did, and it becomes therapeutic. Yeah. But you probably ain't putting all that together at that no. age. You just nope. know I felt free at the moment. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. So then you get into now, acting now class. Now get into acting class. There okay. we go. Ironically, the class I got into much love to Molly Gibbs. Mm. Molly Gibbs had. In the hood, mm-hmm. the only, probably the only acting class you would find that took people, you know, on the streets. Yeah. Like, like I was. How important is that? How important is that to <laughs> have access wanted, to things when we don't have resources? What she did was incredible. Mm-hmm. Marla Gibbs, love you. Let me move this here. Right. Ma, Let me I hit the you. high bell for Marla Gibbs. <laughs> yes. That's amazing. I didn't even know that. That's yeah. amazing. Uh-huh. 
So I went to the acting class, and I mean, without being cocky, um, you killed it. I'm gonna say it. Yeah, you don't have it to. was it was one right. of those things where it was just so easy, it was simple. Mm -hmm. But here is how God came in. Okay. I end up accidentally um, getting my mother read this thing about a free acting class. Okay. Because when Ma when Marla gives thing, I had to pay a little, but mm -hmm. she thought she read a free acting class that was all the way. Now Chip Fields had a class school called Rainbow Connection. Okay. I went there mm -hmm. thinking I'm gonna get free acting classes. Mm -hmm. Went in there. This lady gave me a free consultation. She was like, she was the first one that really hit and was like, you know what, your daughter is great, uh -huh. but I could take her to levels. Right. And then she was like, the price it costs. Yeah. My mother was like, uh, we don't we have that do kind that. of money. Right. Yes. Right. And she was like, um, my mother told me, if you're willing to eat all your food at school, mm -hmm. I could take the grocery money. Wow. And I could get these, I could pay for the um, monthly classes. Uh huh. I made the deal. Uh -huh. And that's how I knew that Monday through Fridays, right. we was making eating. sure we eating good at, at school. school. Cause moms is taking the grocery yeah. money right. and putting it towards your acting, acting classes. I got to that school and the cut. It was that school when mm -hmm. the teacher Joy Sylvester. I'm dropping names to give them credit. Absolutely, Joy Sylvester. I was only there a week when the color purple had this. They, they were going around having a cattle Castle call. call like, yeah. yeah. It was a cattle, cattle call. call. They put everybody. They, they went to every state <clears throat> and kept looking for this one character. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make this go quick. I'm not trying to. No, no, so, look. We got, we got a little time. <laughs> we okay. got a little time. Okay. Radio, okay. we going to cut it down. Okay. For here, we got some time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what ended up happening was she submitted my pictures, mm -hmm. and they wanted to see me at an audition. Okay. I walked to the audition. And it was like 300 girls. Right. I was a, it was a long line. As soon as I got up on stage, Ruben Cannon mm -hmm. was three, like, th like three deaths down. Right. He got up, walked over, and said, hey, you stand up, mm -hmm. turn around. And he was like, I want you to come back tonight mm. at this theater. Did and you audition yet? No. You were just in line. I was, no, I just sat down. Okay. To give him my picture and my resume, I just sat yeah. down on gotcha, stage. Yeah, got you, okay. And, um... I didn't even audition. I went straight to mm -hmm. where he wanted me to go. Yeah. When I got there, I, that's how I met Spielberg. I did not know. Uh, who he was. No, I didn't know Spielberg right, you just was saw there. A white dude in, around. <laughs> they shoot a black movie, and this is a white guy right here. I didn't even know what the movie was. <laughs> I know I nothing. You. I got you. So I got there, and when I tell you, Spielberg, they I got there late. They was like, we've been waiting for you. They put me in mm -hmm. the room, mm -hmm. and Spielberg did an acting scene with me. So he's reading with you. He's reading with me. Okay. And the way he did it, he was like, he put the script down. He was like, I, I want to give you a scene. He was like, pretend you got your sister. Mm -hmm. You're real protective of her. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just going to ad lib this. And how old were you at this time? I was 12 when I auditioned. Sheesh. Okay. And I said, okay. I do want folks to know the greatness. Mm -hmm. what's, what's happening. And my age. I got you. All right. You know what I'm saying? I was 10 two years ago. Oh, I was I was nine and a half. That's what I'm saying? <laughs> wow, I slipped up. <laughs> so right. we went ahead, and when I said Spielberg, was, he was active right yeah. there. And that's how you know he's a great director, because he can actually do both. Yeah, he was right. like, he didn't want to do the script. I've never had an audition where someone did that, even to this day. Right. And he just did it. Next thing I know, we had, was in there for two hours. Mm -hmm. He asked me to come to Amblin, and it just kept going and kept going. I didn't have an agent. I never had a, I never had auditioned before. Right. I never had anything. Right. All I know is when I got the role, mm -hmm. my phone was ringing. I know it like, was. I'm a, I bet you had a bunch of cousins you didn't know about, too. Man! <laughs> <laughs> That's really, you got, oh, uh, you know, I'm your cousin. I you, still get it on social media. Right. I'll be like, I hey, cuz. I'll be like, hmm? Gang or, or right. Like, oh, what, what, like, what, what, what kind of cuz? <laughs> what cuz, what cuz like, we talking about? Right. We talking about wise cuz or uh, uh, cousin cousin? <laughs> Relative cuz. Right, so I, I right. get it. <laughs> I still get it. Oh, we got, we right. cousin. We go way back. I'm like. Okay. I hear so, you. Yeah. So anyway. at what point did you realize the magnitude of the film that you were in? Or did I, you? No, <laughs> you did. No. The so whole, hold on. Let's no. let's let's just put it into perspective for those who just tuned in, right? Of uh, catching up. You're on the set of Color Purple. Mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg mm -hmm. is directing. Mm -hmm. Oprah, Whoopi mm -hmm. Goldberg, mm -hmm. Danny Glover, 
everybody. And you just like, oh, I'm just here to do my part. Pretty much. I love it. Let me hit the hype bell for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a regular Tuesday. <laughs> Pretty. And on top of it, my mother was the kind of mother. She, I had younger sisters. She still mm. expected me to watch them. Mm. So they on came. set. Oh, they were coming yeah. on set. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was still responsible for my sisters. Okay. Um, and you got <laughs> a good, a large <laughs> chunk of the movie is you in the beginning because yes. you're the main character. The movie is centered around Celie. Yes. And yes. you are young Celie before it jumps for the Whoopi. Yeah. Goldberg, Miss yeah. Goldberg. Yeah, yeah, the no, first. And I want to ever say that with much due respect for everything that she's put oh, to yeah, the yeah, yeah, culture yeah. and everything. You know what I mean? But you are, you have this role yeah. all the way until you get slammed down the steps, basically. Man, yeah. I <clears> mean, <throat> I I freaked out. I was like, you're talking about over the first 35 minutes of the movie. Yeah. And when the production started, the first day of filming mm -hmm. of The Whole Color Purple, yeah. that's what I did. I did the, the Burt scene. Okay. That you saw. Yeah. So I'm on set and I'm doing this birth scene and I'm still like, it's just a job. And, yeah. and I'm well, loving this. you comb hair and, it, and you get slapped. And, oh, we ain't going to talk about the slap. But I think you read that. I posted <laughs> the slap was real. The slap was real. The slap was this real. This before CGI and all. No. Like, they really <laughs> slapping folks in movies. No. <laughs> like, I mean, I'll never forget that scene because... Mm -hmm. The only reason why I didn't stop is mm -hmm. because of my training. I was right. taught as Keep never going. stop. Yeah. You never stop. There's no mm -hmm. reason. I mean, for I, I could tell that acting when somebody get hit or when somebody get hit. Yeah. And the way you looked up, you was like, fool. <laughs> Dude, I was like, why? Well, the guy hit for real. I was like, what right. was this? Why? Oh, I kept thinking in my head, like, never don't stop. Don't mm -hmm. stop. But I'm looking at him like, Keep dude, going. why? Right. And then I heard Spielberg immediately was like, cut. <laughs> and uh, then he went, he said, did you hit her for real? Uh, <laughs> and, um, and then of course he apologized. Right. And that's just, I never took nothing. Like Danny is not, Danny yeah. is, when I say to you, Danny is such a good friend. He's still, that's he's a amazing. wonderful person. This was just acting. He and, was the first celebrity I met just on a whim by accident. And he was just like, he looked, I looked, I was like, he said, yeah, you want a picture? He just asked me. <laughs> I yeah, didn't know. Right, I was right. I was coming out of Wars dinner. He was yeah. just walking through the hotel, and I looked and I was like, "That's Danny Glover, just mm -hmm. you know, Atlanta." Yeah. And he yeah. was just like, "Hey, you want a picture?" I was like, "Come on!" I cool. took the picture and that was it. That was he cool. cool, cool, super He's cool. Cool. Right. Even to this day, like we met up, <clears throat> the color purple. Some of us we met up about oh, I think maybe like was about two years ago. Yeah, because it was thirty fifth anniversary a couple years ago. Yeah, so I'm guessing yeah. it was probably but, around then. No, no, it wasn't mm. even for that. But we just all hit up yeah. to, and, and met up, went to eat and everything. Wow. Oh, we were supporting Danny's play. He had a play okay. he was doing. Okay, So Amazing. went to support, yeah, try to support each other. And That's stuff beautiful. Like that. So to yeah. this day, you guys still interconnected. Because this is this is an iconic film. Yeah. It's one of those ones. You have to see. Yeah. Like It's like, you know, he had a list, black list of films. Yeah. It's like Roots, Color Purple. Minister Society. Dude, you got to see some of these. You know what I mean? I was watching, uh, what was that, Trivial Pursuit one day, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And on Triver, Trivia's Pursuit, they actually said, um, um, if you're, they, they they referred to my name and they said something like, um, if you're a true fan, mm -hmm. who plays? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was it. like, yep. did they just, yeah. it was like, okay, if you really know, you really like, know. it was a hard question. Yeah. <laughs> Because oh the, the, you gonna most people gonna say oh it's Whoopi Goldberg but no yeah. you gotta really know yeah right yeah so yeah right there we go so that's what's up man we, I'm, I don't want to dwell on that because I know everybody knows they can look up information on that but I do want to give you your props because not only did you have that you had you had the, the uh, so many movies you know, Sister Egg and the, the chess movie you yeah. and all these different I, movies yeah. and then you, oh, you fast some forward research, you got, huh? I mean. Mm, mm, I'm not going to no. say that I do, but I'm going to let you do it. You know what I mean? But, I mean, I, I, well, I feel like thank this. Thank you. Today's day is just like music. Anybody can rap because we have the uh, access to do, you know, to the equipment, right? Uh -huh. It's not like before we got paid millions of dollars to get in the studio. Right. Now anybody can be a journalist or a podcaster because we have access to the equipment, but I like to pride myself in doing the actual yeah, work. Yeah, no, you on another level. I appreciate that. <laughs> she said it. Young Seely said it. This woman has a book in the Smithsonian. <laughs> she said it. All right. Now, let's talk about these things because you, f 
fast forward into your career, you're still in the industry, right? Mm-hmm. And we hear so many times we deal with colorism, not just not just racism, but we deal with colorism, right? Mm-hmm. We deal with hairism, as mm-hmm. a word I made up, but we deal with it, right? We right. deal with these things, and sometimes we get typecast, and you start mm-hmm. to develop your own lane, and you say, you know what, I'm going to do a reality show before reality shows are reality shows. Yes. So talk yeah. to me about that. How the heck did that happen? Well, you know what? Actually, I'm going to give that credit to, um, at the time I had a friend, um, and he was in in the industry, and he's the one hitting me up back then. He said, you know what? The internet's going to blow up. Mm, He was ahead of the curve. Yes, he was. I'm going to give him credit. He said that. And he was like, um, he thought um, reality shows was going to hit, too. Yeah. He was like, let's do something. Okay. And at the time, you know, he just came up with, you know, the concept. It was his concept, yeah. and he wanted to know if I would produce it okay. and be um, and be on it. And yeah. I said, I've never produced, but I would love to produce, mm-hmm. and something in me tells me that you're right. Yeah. And we did with a show called Creating Celebrity. Okay. Right? And it was phenomenal. It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, and sure enough, it was funny because it took about, we got a lot of pushback at first yeah, of from course, the show. Of course, yeah, because it's new. Got, yeah, it's people new. just like, the, the reality? The yeah, reality, no. We're doing real life. We're not making up life. Exactly. Now look at us it, now. <laughs> right. And, right. Mm-hmm. And then it turned around. It was like, wow. You know, mm. just something that was just like now is something that yeah. is regular. So right. that's how that came about. And it, and I, I realized then I kind of like producing. Okay. I did, and so I got into, you know, producing other stuff like live events as well mm-hmm. and, you know, some projects a little bit. Yeah. I, um, so, you know, keep myself in acting. I didn't go in front of the, act, the camera as much anymore mm-hmm. just because um, I, I didn't quite like what the industry was presenting. I understand. Let's get into that right now, mm. because uh, obviously I myself, I don't I've watched like 10 minutes of Roots. I can't watch. it. <coughs> OK, this is me. Yeah, I Y'all understand. can take my car. It's fine. I understand because I don't like the way we portray it sometimes. Yes. Right. So you coming into the industry in a movie like this, mm-hmm. right, that everybody yes. sees and knows and you might be like, we not all like this. But no. some of your realities did parallel to what you're playing so how much is it a part to where you're like okay i want to control this narrative and i want to show it so other people may be connecting with it and may be able to get help or fight through it but i also don't want to be a part of this this is it okay so that's a good point what you're saying because <clears throat> what a lot of people get confused with the color purple and why it is so iconic mm-hmm. and when i tell you i have fans that's coming from, i mean speaking languages i don't even know right um because no matter where you was at mm-hmm. there was a silly somewhere yes and i recognize even in my life mm-hmm. that character right but what happens is during that time in hollywood mm-hmm. You didn't get an all-black cast. Correct. That was backed by a studio. Yes. That was on the platform Mm -hmm. in which The Color Purple was. Yes. So we opened the door. Yes. So that film, when Alice Walker wrote that book and that story, she shared Mm -hmm. a story that was... Very personal. Very very personal. Very in-depth. Uh-huh. Yes, it was deep. Yes. It was beyond just that, you know, about a black country right. girl. Right. So, and then when the studios took it, mm-hmm. and they, and when I said we not only broke barriers, because remember yeah. at that time you had, um, what is that? You ah, oh, it, it slips me right now. They was protesting. Yeah. NAACP. Yes. They was protesting all this stuff. People didn't want to see that. Right. But what happened was you now had. Because of the success of The Color Purple, all black cast and a woman cast, and Mm -hmm. it was talking about, you know, topics that wasn't being dealt with. Taboo topics and within, not just in Hollywood, but in life and family. You open them doors. Yeah. Doors open. Mm -hmm. The black films that we have today have to, you know, pay homage to that. You can't have Wakanda Forever without Color Purple because of what's going on in it. You got an all black cast in a time where they were not hitting the green light, and they weren't saying, oh, this will work. They mm-hmm. were saying, eh, we're going to put a little money into it. And right. what happened? We blow the roof off. Now you got exactly. people like Deion Taylor. You got all of these all of these right. people that are, you know, able to 
let their and creative that's juices what flow. the color purple mm-hmm. went for me like when you look at it you know that's yeah. what it's about so like yeah okay i did the color purple mm-hmm. but then you know like coming into it and again auditions mm-hmm. um there was a lot of um, colorism. Yes. There was a lot of issues that was hitting that, mm-hmm. that I hear these actors now talking, talking about. about and it. I said, Ooh. yeah, didn't I tell y'all that? Yeah. And I was like, and then you, the, you you're not, it's not like you getting paid. Yeah. It wasn't like that kind of thing. People thought of actors. Mm-hmm. So when I looked at it at that point, I left for my mental health. Okay. There was a lot going on. I needed to stop. Yes. And I wanted to. I even went to film school uh, for a moment, and I wanted to get my degree in directing. I wanted to be able to contribute better, mm. even though it was a hard door at that time yeah. to kind of get into. So you saw the problem. you like, okay, I want to be part of the solution. And I started a business, too. I mm-hmm. was like, I saw the problem. I was yeah. like, okay, this is not where your money's going to be. Mm-hmm. You're going to get fame. You're going to yeah. get, but if you really want to do something, mm-hmm. I was, for me, I was a child. Yeah. I didn't have the. Then you didn't have an agent and any of those yeah, things. So no, I'm sure your like, deal wasn't the best situation. Oh, well, in Color Purple, no, my deal was pretty damn good. Hold on I one learned. second. We have a bell for that. <laughs> We're going to hit the bell for that. I didn't know it. Until right. years later, when I heard the other actors complaining, yeah. I was okay. like, "Okay, oh, hello, that's not my ministry." No, but all right. <laughs> no, I right. was like, "Well, one of the reasons my deal was so so good, we're going to talk about money, mm-hmm. was because there was a rule in, I guess, SAG had it that uh-huh. in order for you to be paid to a certain scale level, uh-huh. you had to have done just one thing. Okay, even if a commercial, it's the right. way they, I guess, yeah. put a cap on something." Mm-hmm. So I was starting a movie, mm-hmm. but I had never done anything in Hollywood. So you, you so I got a yeah, cap. There you go. But I don't know who it was, whether it was Spielberg. I felt it was because I kept getting these bonus checks mm. from. Um, I just kept getting these fucking bonus. I mean, so after the movie's done, yes. you talk about it's playing, it's going, and yes. you just you go into the mailbox like, whoa, hold on, happy oh, birthday. Bon- I mean, you know where those came from? Hundred K. You know, I'm gonna tell you where it came from. They came from you deciding to eat only at school and your mama trading the grocery money to get these. These are called dues. You're going to pay them one way or another. Some people hit Hollywood or they get fame easily, right? Mm-hmm. They get, boom, I did this, they out there, boom. And then years later, they you watch them. And I'm not talking about anybody specifically. I don't want to catch cancel. <laughs> you see them and they going crazy or you see them and they like um, not living their best life. They're paying those dues. After mm-hmm. they got paid, mm-hmm. to me, and this is just my own personal opinion. Mm-hmm. You paid those dudes early. You weren't you weren't given anything. You use mm-hmm. your talent, your pain, and your therapeutic means to get to it, mm-hmm. and then you got on. Mm, so brother. now you're getting these bonus checks. Mm, you come to the brother. mailbox, mm-hmm. and it's not ten dollars. Oh. <laughs> it's way more than that. It's a right. few zeros. So that's what. That's awesome. That and that's what it was. And <clears throat> um, I did. I used it wisely. I opened mm-hmm. up. I was 16. I opened up my first beauty supply store. Mm-hmm. I started getting into business. I okay. started buying real estate okay. with the money. And you're um, changing generationally. You're changing wealth. You're buying real estate, but you came over here homeless. Yeah. I don't think they heard you. Let me hit the button again. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I sure did. Okay. And um, even though I got out the industry, I guess. Uh, okay. So you got from in front of the camera. Yeah, I got from in right. front of the camera. Went behind the camera to 107 Street Watts. Mm. Love you. I started buying uh, real estate. I bought up my whole damn block. When I hear them say buy up the block, yeah, I really you did. really did it. Yeah, really. I was buying up. Um, I we would remodel houses. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of um, gang members. Mm-hmm. And um, ex cons, right. we'll put them to work, mm-hmm. show them. Um, because you knew their people, you know, their people, yeah. Well, I mean, right. well, they was they were my your people, friend. They right. were, yeah, I get it. we was, and that's what we need representation of people with wealth in our communities. That's a whole nother yeah. topic. Let's yeah. keep going. Though. Well, 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 let me tell you that part. Mm-hmm. I don't know because I caught a case, I had to leave. Uh, I, really, <laughs> I was like, okay, because you can't save everybody. That's a, that's another <laughs> thing. <laughs> You can't, oh, you can't, you, can tra- you can't save everybody. Man, you can't. I was right. like, oh <clears throat> shit, if I stay here any longer, I'm going to catch a case yeah. again. I beat that one. But right. I like, but I get it though, because you come back to help. Yeah. Everybody. You help yourself everybody. as well as others yeah. while you're doing it, yeah. but everybody doesn't want to help. I'm proud of that moment. Right. There we yeah. go. I love it. I, let me hit the, the hype bell for beating the case. No <laughs> flat. <laughs> You you You're start funny. to move through yeah. these things and then you say, you know, I have a love for what I do with hair. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
you had the biggest commercial ever doing hair in the movie. <laughs> now you fast right? forward to do a hair, yeah. and you are an amazing braider. Yeah. How did you? I, well, I'm assuming you got the skill from you know growing up in the, in the islands and having the background that you have. You take these skills and you say, you know, what, this is a business. Yes. So talk to me about this. That's exactly what it was. Okay. Um. I started doing hair at home. I always was doing hair, even for the color purple. In between Bray, I yeah. do scenes, I do my hair. Uh -huh. But after doing the color purple and I took a break, I started a home-based braidery called Mahogany Maine. Okay. And I like that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and I'm proud because I, I could say I was the first legal mm -hmm. lies home braid braidery. And the reason why I can say I was the first <laughs> is because I fought mm. to make it legal. Okay. They wasn't allowing me to have a braider at the house. Uh -huh. They there was this all was in these California. Rows. Yes, in okay. California. It wasn't <clears> a. Um, I wanted to take credit cards. I wanted to um, operate. Okay. And I remember I had to go down and prove to them that I found a clause, and I share for other braiders because okay. I believe that clause still works to this day. Wow. And the clause was, they allow in other neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's for you to have a home base braidery, but mm -hmm. they're um because you're braiding here yeah. with horses or animals. Mm. You can braid. Yeah. And or weaving, basket weaving. Right. And I was like, well, that's what this is saying. I'm, I'm braiding, I'm weaving. And I'm yeah. weaving. Uh -huh. And if you can allow in those neighborhoods, this Why applies can't I? here. Right, and it was like, well, you, I said, no, I don't perm. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything like that. I'm not like using that. chemicals. No, yes. it's all natural. Which I, makes sense to have the rule because if I'm using chemicals, certain things yes. can happen. It can be dangerous, but right. I'm not doing that. Right, and that's right. what, and they couldn't, they didn't understand back then what a braidery was. I got you. So I was able to fight, use that clause, mm -hmm. and I opened up um, Mahogany, Maine, mm -hmm. and I started doing hair. And wow. I would have clients from all over that would come. Mm -hmm. They didn't know I was in the color purple. But they would come and I would do styles, mm -hmm. but they would have a lot of hair problems. Okay. And um, Is this where you got into, where you start getting into the restoration and yes, the I started, hair therapy, what yes, I'm calling it. Yeah. I literally started thinking to myself as some of my clients would come, mm -hmm. things that I remember back home, like, from even with my mother, like we was using aloe vera, I was planting herbs. We was, yeah. I mean, um, a natural, natural approach. stuff, right? Right. So I would make stuff, but it wasn't until I had, I got pregnant with my daughter. Okay. When I got pregnant, all of a sudden, I wanted, I realized like I was gonna have this little girl. She mm -hmm. was gonna be, you know, my complexion. Right. I knew her hair problems. A mini and, you. And yes, and I was like, <clears throat> I want to make sure she has products because I'm over here trying to make stuff mm -hmm. for people to right. help their problems. And I decided I'm going to create a hair brand. I'm going to create shampoo. I'm going to create what she needs. Okay. And that's how I started Black Silk. Black Silk. She had Black Silk so you can have uh, whatever they had just for me. Just that's what happened. <laughs> You started this stuff. I love it. So you yeah. you're you've taken once again taking something that you had to deal with a trauma and turning it into therapy for yourself and others. Yes, and I would like to share how I got the name Black Silk because this is too cute. Mm -hmm. My little girl. I didn't have a real. I was making the shampoo. I was making stuff, and I accidentally made a natural perm. It felt like. Uh huh. And she no, would go to school. Accidentally, it was. It was so. It was accidentally because it was okay. all natural. Mm -hmm. But I would press her hair; it would get so silky, and her mm -hmm. hair was so long. Yeah, right. They used to think she was like. It was like, what is it going on? Mm -hmm. And they would touch her hair, and they would say, "God, it feels like black silk." Oh. And she came home to me one day and was like, "Mama, they over there saying my hair flex black silk again." Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. "Let's let's go ahead and I trademark like and copyright that." that. <laughs> Right. Dude, that was it. I That's love it, exactly. man. I, I love that you have so many fights. So you go to court and say, hey, I want to make sure that I can do this in my home. But now you see so many people on social media doing hair and braiding mm -hmm. hair from their home. They have no idea it came mm -hmm. from you. That's a crazy. I, I didn't think about it like that. but I did. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I did fight. Okay. It is, it, And it was. <clears throat> I, and I advertised to credit cards. Mm -hmm. 
And you know people complain and try to, you know, yeah. have to be haters. Yeah. And then they come in, and the board will come, and right there all of my life. Yeah, you got everything there. in there, yeah. I was like, yeah, I take American Express, too. I was like, I take okay. it all. Everybody can't get Amish. <laughs> Get high bell for that. I love it. I love it. I love so, it. Yeah. I really do. So th- let's talk about the book. You got this book in front of you. I see oh, you. You yes, know, yes. and you've written about. So when we open this book and we open these pages that are in the museum, <laughs> this book is in the museum, y'all. I don't get yes. guests with books collection. in museums. I've talked to award winning, yes. Pulitzer Prize winning authors, but everybody's oh, not in the museum. Thank you. So talk to mm-hmm. me about what's in this book. I, I'm looking, Black, I got okay. math problems on here. That means you solving things when it comes to hair. <laughs> um, this book, let me tell you, mm-hmm. okay. I, one day, decided to, uh, while I was trying to make the hair products, mm-hmm. I kind of started to um, say to myself, I noticed a simulation with, um, as I was trying to learn more yes. about different chemicals and different mm-hmm. things, I was learning some things about the natural, about black hair that was just interesting to me. Okay. And as I started to write the book, mm-hmm. I realized that this is bigger. We know of our hair to be a cultural thing. Yes. We know the ancestries behind it. Some of us, some of us don't. And you, mm. you've had... I think that you have a more of a direct connection to who you are than mm-hmm. most of us here as African Americans. Like we can go back a couple of generations mm-hmm. to maybe a, a grandma, grandfather, and then we automatically skip all the way back to below. Somebody was a slave, right? Mm-hmm. And that's how kind of how we go. Mm-hmm. But you might have a little bit a deeper rooted connection because you know you actually came from this island. Mm-hmm. You, you might know who your parents' parents were, mm-hmm. and you kind of knew a little bit of your culture. Like you know yeah, what, what, what dishes, so I, you, yeah, no, you can no. name what what a, a what a a dish that your mom makes, yes. and you know where it comes from. Yes, we don't. <laughs> we don't That's like it. I know mm-hmm. like okay, my grandma mm-hmm. made certain dishes, but I don't know what country it originates from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or, 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 or the effect behind it. And that's deep because, <clears throat> damn, that's deep when you say that because mm-hmm. I remember even when I started the business, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people was like, "You having a, a business in Watts? Mm-hmm. Or you 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 doing here? Are you doing?" And I and I would tell them, "Well, back home, yes." You, we bought and traded all the time. The, it's like, easy to do business. Was, like, you can do business with ourselves. And, yeah, yes. they were like they were right. the fishermen. Our family was in real estate and in fishing. Right. Um, fishing, and there were the there be the somebody down the street that they do bakery, and sometimes you right. don't have money, and you know, People and you'll be told and go to you know such and such house, and that's the only person you I heard want the bread accent from. come out when she did it, right? That's oh, I did. Saying. Yeah, I love <laughs> right. it. That was a great thing. It's a great thing because I get it. I understand. Yeah, where you're coming so from, you'll right. be like, you have to go to that person house, mm-hmm. and I get bread. You didn't have to have always money. Yes, you bought it. Your talents. Yes. So when coming here, it was really natural for me to be like, no, like let's connect this way. Business. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. So, and then I was already with with my kids, like, if they were sick, mm-hmm. I would tell people all the time, it's like, you know, it was so funny how there'd be so many natural herbs. Like, I mm-hmm. see making bush just growing on a tree out mm-hmm. here, like, just growing. I'm like, yeah. do you know how hard it is to get that plant? Mm-hmm. And we don't know what it is. We're just walking by it. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you go, you see me and my mother, but we be pulling this Pull plants down, and right. this stuff uh, off the school. <laughs> so like, I'm talking about big old branches and right. taking it in our backyard. I'm like, yeah. Do you know what that does? Right. So anyway, um, that's the kind of stuff when I was getting into the book, mm-hmm. right? I was doing more research and making stuff. And then as I would find the details about, mm-hmm. it made me realize one thing that I started reading um, and finding the connection of our hair was bigger than just what we've been told, the ancestry. Right, right, right. Do you know when I went to... Um, share it with people and I try to write the book I was getting told constantly even from um, publish, publishers that it's just hair right nobody cares it's just hair yes, and then it it's just, just our hair it was just it's, here right yeah <clears throat> and I literally came with a saying it's not just here because that was my retaliation right. I was like no it's not just yes. Here yeah, yes. and I have the research, and then I started doing more research. And as I would research it, one of the things I talked to you about and why the products were so important for me to start making them mm-hmm. was that 95% of this whole universe, mm-hmm. 
out we are people who have dark hair, black hair. Okay. And that includes people with light brown hair. But it's important why that color black, mm. right? I say I say the book is called A Black Hair Conspiracy, and it's a double entendre. Okay. Because it's not just about black hair, yeah. but it's about the color black hair. Okay. And what black hair does is the melanin in black hair mm. holds light. The color of the hair holds, holds light. light. Right. So it's there to make sure that you stay warm. To protect you because once again it's also attract the sun right yes right so they yes. always like to, to make dark the place of shadows when in actuality if you wear black people say oh you're gonna be hot you're not even putting together what you're saying because if i can attract sun rays i'm getting vitamin d and I, i'm yes. not vitamin d deficient Right, and and ironically, most black people on the average is vitamin D deficient, mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be. Right. All we have to do is go in the sun. Well, that's why we're supposed to be on an island somewhere. No, but I'm serious. That is why. Right. Yes. Right. You know, we are we are naturally we we attract light. Right. So the hair, what I started to teach, and when I discovered, was that. Our hair is a conductor mm. for the universe. We flow on energy, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And our hair is the conductor in the way, so I could break down conductor real quick. Mm -hmm. You got this beautiful TV back here, but you got the electricity is in the walls. Yes. In order for the TV to work, it needs the energy. Yes. So you plug it in, into the outlet. Right. That rubber mm -hmm. is a conductor. Mm-hmm. For electricity. It's like a train track. That's right. right. It protects you. It, it guides it where it's supposed to go, and mm -hmm. it protects you from, because if you just go to too much electricity. Oh, yeah, it's blowing up. Right. Right. Your <clears throat> hair is your conductor. Okay. Because you're nothing but electricity. Right. When I hear people speak my my saying, my mm -hmm. knowledge, I hear they're, they're all over mm -hmm. the TikTok. Nine ether. Your mm -hmm. hair is nine ether. When mm -hmm. I hear how I get excited. Because you see the, the fruits of your labor being broadcast. Like they hear it. They, they get, get it. it. They, they get understand. it. Like, they're not coming to me like I'm weird. Like right. it's just hair. hair. It's not just now, hair. Um, when, when now I, I got to grow oh. my hair back. There's a reader. No, you don't. I cut my no, off because no, my, my niece was going through chemo, so I cut my hair off. Oh. And me and my dad cut our hair off so she wouldn't feel yeah. left out. But now I got to grow no, it back. No, you don't. All right, good, because no, I, I didn't want to do Let that. me explain that part real quick. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't, Reese. I'm going to explain that part because I've heard people say to me, okay. how did this work if I don't have hair? Okay. No, you do have hair. Mm -hmm. You have nostrils. You have hair. The yes, body yes. is full with hair, even microfibers that you cannot see. Mm -hmm. So what is happening, though? Your melanin, mm -hmm. what did I say about melanin? Right. It takes in light. It conducts light. Mm -hmm. That energy that is taken in, mm -hmm. sometimes, this is why I feel that a lot of people don't get it. Sometimes you feel there's a moment where you feel like you got to cut your hair. Mm. Where you feel like. Your body it, is telling you. Your yes. body is Your body is perfect. Yes. We un unperfected. So your body is telling you sometimes you just be thirsty. You're taking you're like, in too I, I need much. some water. That's your taking well, I just want a salad. Much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I got you. What happens if that TV taking too much energy? It's going to explode or, 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 yeah, short circuit, right? So sometimes we need to trim it a little bit. Yes, you do. Or you go through phases yeah. in life, and you are supposed to cut and your And sometimes hair. your body will tell you, you start going bald, and you're trying to figure out why. It's because you, <laughs> you need to cut the braids down. You need to seize it sometimes. <laughs> right. right it's trying to let you know let it's you okay know. It's to too let much. it go yeah it's trying to let you know <laughs> it's okay to <laughs> let it go yes you're right i appreciate that <laughs> i don't know who needed to hear that but there was <laughs> I got you. Oh, so man. this book is basically, it's almost not basically, I don't want to downplay it at all. Um, and that was my, my apologies for that word. The book is almost a history lesson as well as a physics lesson and yes. how you can, how you can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And if you do the research, it's an introductory. So I do ask for you in the book to do the research yes. because what I did was find already, I found mm -hmm. the data that was already there that wasn't shared with us. Yes. And you put it on blast. And I put it down. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And so now when I hear people say and they conduct how hair is conducting, how it's supposed to use, mm -hmm. how energy flows, yes. I break down the book how energy flows, how you need to understand mm -hmm. how this works. I, there's a chapter called How Our Hair is Connected to the Universe, mm -hmm. right? So I want you to do the work. 
uh, as well and contribute and add to it. This that makes so much so sense good. to how it's, it's so electric and it supersedes life because when you it's pass, bigger. your hair still grows. So I yes. get it. I definitely it's understand. It's bigger than that. Yeah. And for African Americans or <clears throat> anyone of melanated mm -hmm. color, because you take in so much mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. your words manifest deeper. That makes sense. It carries because it's further. going inside of you. So whatever comes out, it's just like yes. just like this. Like if you got a superconductor or a yes. super, uh, if you have a transformer holding a bunch of electricity, it's there going go. to make more of a difference than if you have a very small light there bulb that go. pops. There I get you it. go. Right. And this is why I really try to stay focused to my Some, people. Somebody in the chat is ignorant. <laughs> she, <laughs> said, she said, I cut my hair all the time. <laughs> and she does. And you know what? And if, and if you cut your hair a lot and you should follow that, mm -hmm. it's, a lot of times if you pay attention to you going through a lot of stress or a lot mm -hmm. of you thinking or whatever, other cultures are connected to their hair very well. They yeah. they wrap their hair in white. Mm. Right? You ever wonder why the Muslims or why yeah. other cultures? Because it, it covers the hair. Mm -hmm. It gets less energy. Mm -hmm. It gives you a time for the body to relax. To relax. I understand. And cool down. Mm -hmm. When something is running too hot. It's going to tire out. That's why you get so tired when you're in the sun too long. I get it. There you go. Mm -hmm. So there is a purpose and a time. And that's why I talk about that in the book, too. It's like you. So don't ever feel bad that you cut your hair. Mm -hmm. You know, we we go through stages. Yeah. We're supposed to. You are supposed to grow. You're supposed to change. Mm -hmm. And if you do a little color, sometimes in the summertime, I used to go real like a lot of color. Mm. So you trying to create take, your yes. own umbrella. Yeah, I got you. So it's okay. Cutting your hair is fine. Sometimes if you need to wear your hair fine, one of the things I do want to stress, though, is about how we cut little kids hair. Okay, let's talk about that. Please. I watch these videos all the time, and I'm going to tell y'all something. The one thing that children have over you as an adult mm. is they follow their natural instincts more than you do. Okay, because they haven't learned the bad habits. That's right, because okay. we train them. Yeah. To what is how to be, you know, adequately effective and mm -hmm. in society, and but they are naturally imp they're naturally prone to natural things. Okay. That's why they always want to eat, put things in their mouth. Mm -hmm. They walk barefooted. I yeah. have a, I talk about grounding a lot. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other thing. But I'm just saying they they do things naturally. Mm -hmm. If they're crying when you're trying to cut their hair, mm -hmm. it's because their spirit is not ready for the hair to be cut. Mm. Okay, I never looked and at it like that. And when the child is ready, they'll yeah. be the first one to tell you, I'm ready I want to cut haircut. it. I want to cut. Mm. I want, and then you cut it, and they're smiling, and they're loving themselves, and they're mm. like, they like this. Because they're more connected to what's really going on naturally. Yes. That makes so when sense. they're crying, mm -hmm. they're trying to tell you it's not you're it. premature mm. with the cutting. That makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, because we're not, we're not feeding them certain things because of their age. We're giving them certain things. So now I get it. Exactly, I understand. Exactly. So we have to be more conscious. Yeah, you have to be more conscious. You definitely mm -hmm. do. And it's okay. Some would need it more. Some might not need it at a yeah. time. And it has nothing to do with age. That makes sense. Look at you just spitting okay. knowledge after knowledge. I ain't mad at that. Uh, we already an hour into the conversation. It <laughs> felt like we've been here 10 minutes. That's crazy. Let's talk about your podcast. A podcast. Because you, you started oh, a podcast. Yes, I sure okay. did. The, the podcast is called The Black Hair Conspiracy. Mm -hmm. The yes. podcast. Um, I wanted to uh, give a little bit more in depth. Yes. Um, uh, on the book, and I appreciate it because everybody is not going to sit down and read. Some people want to be told. <laughs> I mean, it's just real. Some of us want to want to listen. And that's right. exactly <laughs> what. That's exactly what my son said. <laughs> I said, "Babe, have you read the book?" He said, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> "He's a like, great book, mom." But right. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He's like, "But when you going to do the podcast?" <laughs> right. When you going to drop an episode, mom? Right. Where right. You gonna, right. I so, understand. So yeah, so the the podcast is just it's a, it's a little bit of everything mm -hmm. because not only do I talk about the book, yes, um, but my the book is also talking about health and wealth and how your hair is connected to health and wealth. So mm -hmm. I talk about money situation as well. I talk about um, health, um, I meditation. Mm -hmm. I, it's a ray of things yes. along with the um, book, but more in. More importantly, it's informative. Yes, it's educational. You know, yeah. yes. And mm -hmm. so it's more on an educational level, very informative. I try to, um, I very much believe, like I said earlier, because uh, of the energy we possess, the power that we hold, mm -hmm. because 
of just our skin color, yeah. it's important that our mind is right and what we speak from our tongue is correct. Makes sense. And so I focus the podcast also on spiritual and awakening and understanding so mm -hmm. that way you can get a change of uh, mindset. Yeah. And I know, like, once you get that going, I guarantee you, like, you, you move. You don't have to understand how manifestation yeah. work. You will start to do it because you already did it. The problems you have in your life, you did it. There you go. I love you that it. you have a podcast because of the way you approach things. It's just from a short medium, but I watch your social media and heard some of the episodes. So the way you approach things is like, I'm going to use this word, and I don't like to use it, but it's our word. So woke, right? You, you, you're mm -hmm. woke because you will do the research. That's what I call somebody's woke. They see something, yeah. they don't just don't start talking about it. They do the research, yeah. but you also are grounded. So it's not like a pushy woke. You know them mm -hmm. pushy woke okay. folks? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be like okay, you don't right. even live in exactly the, the real just, world. I know what you're you saying. You actually live in the real world, and you understand who people are because you right. walked it, mm -hmm. right? Like right. the preachers that can really connect with people exactly. are the people that were out there in the streets a little right, bit. Right, right. You know exactly. what I mean? So right. I understand. So that's why I, I can appreciate Thank how you, you approach things. Thank so I get you. it. I get it. Yep. So you guys, make sure you check out the podcast. The, the Black, Black Hair, Hair Conspiracy. conspiracy. Uh -huh. It is on Spotify. Um, everywhere. I everywhere everywhere <laughs> everywhere <laughs> it's everywhere exactly. you can consume your podcast yes. we have this book that you can see at the museum you can also get it online amazon, amazon. or on my website yes. my black silk okay yes All right do you still have the products man i not only do i still have the products mm -hmm. but we are launching a couple new stuff right now mm. and let me explain to you why reese that is so important unlike other hair brands mm -hmm. that's out there. Um, first of all, we are the best. We're the only best. We're mm -hmm. the only ones. No one exists. I'll take it. Okay. Um, and the reason why is because I formulate each product myself. Okay. This is not no... Um, and you still own it. And See, I the, own it, it 100%. So let me... Let me I'm not going to say the name of this product. But I was using a product and it worked f great. My homeboy put mouth. me on this product. I'm sorry, not it wasn't. I'm just gonna get some backstory. <laughs> go ahead, go My ahead. My homeboy no, no, put no, no, me no. on this product. It's a uh, lotion. Cause uh, you know us, like we got to get this right, part. Right, right, get right, right. <laughs> I can't walk out and this part ain't right. It's got to be this part. Got to be right. And this part right. was right with that product. And then a few weeks later, no, it was months later. It wasn't writing like it was supposed to. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't moisturizing the way I, I knew mm -hmm, it to. Mm -hmm. So I was like, something wrong. Mm -hmm. I looked on my old bottle. Looked on the new bottle. I see that the ingredients look the same, but yes. it's, this little package is a little different. Oh, y'all sold it. There you go. And That's now, exactly And now what another company yes. owns it, and they're not putting the care into it, I yes. think. Right. So no. I, that's why I say, yes. and it wasn't, and it really was affecting my body different. Yes. And I hit my homeboy and I was mm -hmm. like, Hey, you know, he's like, yeah, they sold it, bro. And yep. I, I was experiencing the same thing. Cause his elbows wasn't mm -hmm. as shiny as, you know, they right. supposed to be. I got hit up <clears throat> the first year I mm -hmm. launched black silk. They wanted to buy it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm with, I'm with creating another right. form of income if somebody wants to sell it, but we also need to maintain the integrity Thank of the you. product. And, and, and I, I said, no, mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't even entertain it. They sent some, the, the scalps to, for, um, towards me. And I'm like, mm -hmm. nobody even knows the brand exists like this. Like how, why are you after me? Mm -hmm. But I had already made up my mind because I wouldn't sell it. Mm -hmm. I always think it's a little bit harder to get it pushed out yeah because a lot of times the minute you well they sell own it, a lot of shelf space oh there you go yeah. so i made a conscious decision my husband and i we went and we when i say i restructured mm -hmm. black silk yeah i restructured it we've been around since 2010 mm. we bought 33 acres of california farmland Whew. Free and clear. Wow. Okay, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I ain't mad at the hold on one second. <laughs> Almost got your forty eight because I'm the deal. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I said. Hit the high right. Bill for that. Right. And the whole reason we restructured everything is mm -hmm. because when you use our pep kiss of peppermint, when you use our oils, yes. I actually I curate those oils. Mm. That's why um 
they, they have to have strong healing powers. Yeah. Right. But we plan to literally develop our manufacturing there. We mm-hmm. plan to develop our um, main office, uh, give you a black silk experience. Mm. We want to put the farm there. We started part of the importing some of the farm work, mm-hmm. but it's a process. Yeah. To As get anything this. worth anything. Right. And right. we, but, but by securing that land, mm-hmm. we knew we was like, like you couldn't, there is no overhead that's killing. Mm-hmm. And I said, Black Silk is a luxury brand mm-hmm. because I put the money in the product. But you're going to get the result when you, you use a product. So I understand yes, it. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And we don't, I won't compromise. There is no, some people ask me all the time, like I said, we're launching right now our edge control. All mm-hmm. I mean, when I say to you is a luxury edge control, mm-hmm. it's because it took me literally, I wanted edge control for over, whew, it's like five years I've been wanting edge control. Mm. People's like, how do you not have an edge control? Mm-hmm. How do you not have a You got to have it right. That's right. Mm-hmm. I had to have it right. There we go. You know, and it's not a simple, um, it wasn't a simple process. It wasn't something I could just cook up yeah. in my backyard like right. I would everything else. So we finally have something that I like. We're mm-hmm. launching it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's gluten-free. I mean, when I said, like, I got 4C here, mm-hmm. you know, when I said it was holding my hair for two, three days, I was like, dang. Okay, then. I was like, that's what. Slay it and lay it. That's what I'm saying. Right. So we have, I'm really excited because we do. We have a couple of new products coming out. And mm-hmm. more importantly, like I tell people, with Black Silk products, mm-hmm. I want people to trust the brand. Right. And that means that, one, I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't even pay for advertising. Mm. And the reason why I don't pay for advertising, a couple of years into the game, like the cost yeah. to pay for all of that. And I was like, wait a minute, I want to. I'm spending hours curating oil. Our peppermint, if you've never had our kiss of peppermint, you ain't yeah. had no oil. I'm telling y'all right now. You ain't right. had when your fresh peppermint is cut and mm-hmm. made. Yeah. Right? And I was like, I'm spending the money in the wrong place. Mm. And we started doing it. I started making it made to order. Yeah. That's how our products are done. And I made up my mind. I'm never going to. I was like, Louis Vuitton don't pay for marketing. They don't. I was like. I've never seen a Chinese restaurant pay I, for marketing. They're just there it. and they never close. Yeah, exactly. so I get it. And everybody knows it. Right. you like, I want <clears> that. And, right. I was like, and that's what I determined. Black Silk product was going to stay. Uh, I'm making a promise. I said it out loud. I said mm-hmm. it to the family. I'm not selling it. Right. And that means that if I have to grow organically mm-hmm. and I want you to go to the website, I want you to take it. Yeah. But I want people to trust the quality. And if you look at our views yeah. since 2010, we're some of the let me tell you, I got celebrities I make products for mm-hmm. as manufacturers. Right. Crazy. They're white labeling from us. Mm hmm. Okay, but you know, but what you would doing. never know. You never know. But the beauty of that is, especially now with social media, like you can make a product, you can show people how to do it, and they will just love it so much and watching you that they'll go ahead and start doing it. Try not do it themselves; they just support you and buy it because you you put an insight on there. Yes, right. That's and that's what we have. We have our get. We have customers that's been with us for twenty years. Crazy, me and I, Bill. <laughs> make sure that y'all check out Black Silk. Um, it's myblacksilk.com. Okay. Man, so we coming up on the 40th anniversary of the color purple. I know it's nice. It's only been 15 years. We <laughs> <laughs> <This nigga. Right. laughs> but you was only two years old on set. I understand. I know. So I <laughs> I know. No. It's hard. Right. I know it. I know it. But you know what? Them products working because that black ain't cracking at all. Oh, thank you know you. what I mean? You still going over right. here. Let's talk about the, our fast four. So usually we have fast four questions as we wrap up our interview. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So uh, we got four questions. We're going to shoot them off. You answer these questions however you want to. Okay. All right. What was your most memorable time on that set? Oh, my God. On the set mm-hmm. would be um, riding the horses. Okay. In between filming. Oh, y'all was just getting busy. Oh, man. I learned how to ride, I learned how to ride horses because it was a real plantation. Okay. And so they will let, you know, I go on a horse and I mm-hmm. learned how to ride horses there. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. A gift that keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. Especially them checks in the mailbox. All right. <laughs> All right. One thing you wish anybody knew about hair. Just one thing you wish people knew about hair. I wish you really understood that how you wear your hair it's also connected to your financial wealth mm. and your actual health. Okay. 
So what what hairstyle need to be rich? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing, right? <clears throat> mm-hmm. We revert back to hairstyles during certain periods of our life. So if you look back into a specific, all the good or bad things mm-hmm. that happen in your life, yes, you're gonna find certain things you did, like with even with your beard or your mm-hmm. hair, yeah. you revert to these during certain times. Okay, the same way you do certain um, personalities, gotcha. right? Yeah. You want something new that you've never had? It's going to be also connected to some. It's going to be a hairstyle that's connected to something you've never really worn, mm-hmm. but very similar to something that always bring you great energy. That makes so much sense. This is why I had the chin straps right now. Let's keep mm. going. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's one thing you wish you knew mm-hmm. about? the entertainment industry when you got on that set or one thing you wish you knew or had knowledge of then that you know now where you were on set of color purple when i was on set of the color mm-hmm. purple oh my god i wish i knew who oprah was gonna be i feel you no, i'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing actually oprah was i knew her because she mm-hmm. Oprah was already yeah, on a she, she was on a talk radio show. at the time. Did no, she have she a talk on, show at the no, time? No, she was on a talk show. Okay. She was big in Chicago. Okay. And, I mean, she was running Chicago, yeah. even when she would invite me out. Okay. So, gotcha. I knew who Oprah was. Mm. But if I, the one thing I wish I knew, honestly, I wish, um... I wish I knew business. I wish I, I was old enough to understand what mm. was happening yeah. around me. I think maybe that also could have been... A detriment, because so. then you don't walk into it as I wouldn't be me free. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really would. I, I did. Might have been a little more time. guarded. Yeah, because yeah. you know what? See, mm-hmm. mm, so those Reese relationships wise. probably would have been different. Reese Wise. To nah. the <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. All right. Last question before we wrap. You get a dinner with four guests, but you're also shooting your podcast. Who are those four guests? And the mics alive. Ooh, who are the four guests? A dinner? That's crazy because I don't know their name, but I know. <laughs> it's all but good. I, there's this um, white lady. Mm-hmm. I can't remember her name. She talks about all the time. She's an activist on um, speaking of bl- black people. Okay. Right. Damn. I um, okay. can't remember her name. If y'all know her name, please. We're gonna share. put it in the chat later. Thank you. Okay. Um, I definitely always wanted to meet her. Okay. Um, I will have my friend Bernice King. Okay. Um, the woman deep. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you. Okay. I appreciate it. This is the first time I've been invited to dinner. I appreciate yeah, it. We asked this gonna, question a lot. I hope y'all are taking notes, celebrities. <laughs> right. I'm going to have you because okay. cause you, you got something going on Thank there you. that you hiding with funny. <laughs> um, and I definitely would also bring... Who would um? This is so funny. I think I would like to speak to Tupac's mother. Mm. I, you didn't That's say that she Shakur had to be, be there. a Fina Shakur. Mm. I, I, um, you didn't say they had to be um alive. No, no, no. So, this is your list. Yes. You can be whoever you want. Th- right. I would, that would be an interesting conversation. That really would. That would. Those are the from four. a different levels because you're talking about from the activist age level, the, age, yes. yeah, having a son in, in the spotlight mm-hmm. and having to deal with those things and pressures, yes. yeah. I yes. love it. I love it. I love it. That was a that was a really dope list. Plus your husband gonna be there. That's it. That's a given. We appreciate that. Uh he was sitting there like, you gonna save me? No, I'm flat. <laughs> I was just flat. <laughs> you was gonna be there, bro. <laughs> right? All right, man. We appreciate you uh for, for coming and joining us. Thank you for your time. Uh this has been a, a very electric interview and I appreciate that. So you guys make sure that if you miss any of it, you can run it back across our video platforms, Reach Radio on YouTube and all the platforms that it's on, especially Facebook. Shout out to everybody that was in the chat patrice chris what's up appreciate y'all shout out my boy ab we up out of here and on the radio side we're gonna get back to this music y'all right y'all we love y'all it's been a pleasure we gone